Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're looking at these P10 LED panels. Each one consists of 32 by 16 high brightness amber LEDs. At the moment we're currently showing the time and a countdown to my birthday and then an example happy birthday message and that will be followed by an example an image the save icon for my Dreamcast game and the kind of effects that we can do. So with four of these panels arranged two by two, the whole thing measures 64 by 32 centimeters, so pretty large. These are the kind of displays you see at train stations or in shop windows. Uh, if this does look a little bit slanted, that's because the surface it's on is slanted. Now this has all been run by this HD U6A controller. You can see the flash drive sticking out the uh, USB port. And I'm just running this off my uh, variable power supply. It's giving out five volts roughly. Though it's dropping when it's drawing a lot of current as it peaks over five amps. But next we'll look at the uh, wiring for these displays. Okay, so let's now look how everything is connected up. If you look on the back of each of these panels, there's an arrow pointing horizontally and an arrow pointing vertically. So each panel needs to match that direction. See that one's pointing up, that one's pointing up, okay? So that's just so that all the displays run correctly in sequence. And because each communication connector, one will be an input and one will be an output. So you can daisy chain each together. So looking at the power coming in from my variable power supply, goes into the controller and then it goes off to each display in turn. As mentioned, these displays use a lot of current, so you need a very good power supply. And then for the communication, we have two channels on this controller. One goes to the top row and the other goes to the bottom. This controller supports a maximum of 20 panels, a range is 10 by two. So for example, this channel, will go off to here and then that one feeds into that one and there's not another one there but that's the idea now these connectors are keyed so you can only put them in one way but on the controller they are not fortunately pin one is marked with a triangle um, I believe yeah and that just matches the red wire on this cable now the other thing to mention is how to keep all these displays together now they came with these i believe they're screws technically m3 let's see if i can even get one off to show you i think i'll put them on very tight now there we go it'll help if i unscrew the right way i was trying to find if these are technically screws apparently they're just screws with an inside thread so this screw goes onto another screw okay and what's unique about them is they have these magnetic uh, discs inside so in theory you could just stick a piece of metal on and it will attach to it obviously it won't keep it perfectly in line but I think that's the idea I can't find really much information about how you're meant to mount these online um, but I do see certain types of structures people use but I just ended up 3d printing these um, panels my printer isn't big enough to do like one all the way down but so i just did individual ones it won't hold the panels perfectly they will move a little bit but just for demonstration purposes it does the job and at the bottom i did these little feet like so so it could stand up and it came along quite well each panel took about as uh, whatever you want to call it supporting structure took about 10 minutes to print and this one these ones took about 48 minutes but it's very strong poa is surprisingly strong if you do a triangle structure like this it will support the weight yes it will wobble a bit if you move it but as i say for demonstration purposes it gets the job done okay so here we have the program hd 2018 this is free software to set up the configuration to put on the flash drive so the controller knows what to display on the LED panels. You see at the moment it's running through the various programs as you saw earlier. So we have like a hierarchical type structure. We have the screen which is the controller. And we have three programs are set up. And each program has a number of items. For example we have the time. And we have a countdown to my birthday. Whenever we select an item, we have various properties down here. For example, we have to use a digital or analog clock to show the date and what format and so on. And there's various pages such as background and border. The settings available depends on the item selected. 
on the countdown we have what time to count down to. Notice that I've set it to one second past midnight on the 22nd, even though my birthday's on the 23rd, but just explaining that recently. As I well, see, technically, you, well, kind of, you come, you become a year older, second past midnight, sort of, anyway. Um, here we have the scrolling text, so you can see the text down here, the font type and size. I think that's foreground and background color there, but it's a one color display anyway. Um, this is just out to continuously move and on the background page you can see it has a zoom effect using circles. This option uh, is hypertext. It's not really hypertext as far as I can see. It's just some images uh, with different sequences. So I loaded the image by clicking on file but now we can go to edit because I've set it up and you can see the image and uh, the image there as well and then we have the options the effects that we do in sequence this is good and fairly easy to use software but it does have some odd quirks as we'll see and there's no undo or redo as far as I can see um, and I have seen some graphical glitches as well which are not shown at the moment fortunately um, what we will do next is actually set up a new uh, screen. Now just to mention this program automatically saves whatever's here. So even if I do file save as and then open it, it will just add it to what's here in any way. But I'm going to delete this screen here. Okay, and we're going to create a new one. So we do new screen, new screen. Now it asked for a password, and I didn't know what the password was until I looked at the manual for this software, which is quite brief, but at least it has the password. Now the password is 168 for some reason, and you can't change the password as far as I see, which defeats the point of having the password, but there you go. I guess anyone who doesn't have access to manual can't mess with this, but still. Um, so we're going to change the controller, which they call a card, to HDU6. Um, no, so that's the wrong one. HDU6A. There we go. So that's the controller we saw earlier. It's got some information about it here, and it's a single color. So there's lots of different controllers. Some that can handle multiple control. Uh, sorry, that can handle multiple colors, and some that have more advanced features. This is a very basic controller. Now the width and height is the overall width and height of the display when all the panels are assembled. So we're going to set this to 64 by 32. As far as I know this controller doesn't support brightness levels which is a shame. Uh, and then on the hardware settings page there's some more options but we just keep it as P10. So you see now we've got screen 1, we've got program 1. Now to add another program we just click on program or if you want to add some items like in this case we're going to add some text just click on that and then we can type in this box we're going to type classic hello uh, sorry hello world like so if I wanted to change the size of font just highlight it and we'll set it to 20. Now notice by default it's only occupying part of the overall display so if we just um, grab we can enlarge like that and then under effect we'll just set it to continuous move and see it scrolling across and that's just a very uh, simple example now if we want to save that to the flash drive we'll click on new disk note that new disk can refer to SD cards but in this case it refers to a flash drive so you see my flash drive is selected D drive and there's a uh, various information about the setup there if we go into adjust time and check that, it will export the current time to the controller. There's a couple of problems here. Obviously, if you don't do it quick enough, you know, you don't put the flash driver in the controller quick enough, the time is going to be out. Also, the controller has a battery to keep the date and time while the controller is powered off. But then every time it's powered up, it's just going to use the date and time that was set in the configuration file, therefore resetting the date and time. So I don't really understand that. Uh, next we just click on export uh, file, I'm not sure what this means, uh, I'm just going to say no, and then you go on cancel, I love that logic, I know it kind of makes sense, but I've just written to the flash driver and now I'm clicking on cancel, okay, it's more exit, but cancel kind of makes sense as well, but there you go, that's a very simple example of 
uh, using the software there's more information on my site including how to set up uh, sorry how to download the software as well as setting it up and so on one last thing I'd like to mention as what is really interesting one of the items up here is called Prey now this required me to do a bit of research because I didn't really know what this was but these are the Islamic prayers the idea is that you say certain prayers throughout the day if you go on edit you can see the different times you're meant to say the prayers on each day so you can imagine like a one of these uh, display boards and it has a time up to remember to do the prayer I guess that's what I'm guessing anyway um, but I thought I'd just show you that that was interesting I had to research that bit because I didn't know but it's good they included that I don't know if it's possible to add more items along here there seems to be very little information online even though this panel seems to be um, quite popular but there you go that's a quick look at the HD 2018 software